There's only one month between Exodus 40, verse 17, and Numbers 1, verse 1, between erecting the tabernacle and the military census commanded by the Lord. Numbers recounts the 42 journeys during the 38 years of desert wandering. In Hebrew, the book is called Be Midbar, or In the Wilderness, but the Septuagint translators named it Erith Moi, which in Latin became Numeri and Numbers in English. Thus, the emphasis rightly shifted from geography to history. Numbers might give you the idea of a math text, but the book begins and ends with census takings of the fighting men of Israel. One lists those who came out of Egypt, the other those to enter Canaan. The Sinai Peninsula stretches 130 miles east-west and 240 miles north-south. A rough inverted triangle bounded on the southwest by the Gulf of Suez, on the southeast by the Gulf of Aqaba, and on the north by the Mediterranean. This desolate land became the graveyard of thousands of unbelieving Israelites. The census lists more than 600,000 adult males, giving a total of at least 2 million in the Exodus. Assuming a female for every male, on average, there would have been 88 funerals a day for 38 years till the whole generation died, Joshua and Caleb accepted. An important distinction should be made in studying the book. God intended the wilderness journey to teach his people his dependable goodness but the wanderings were due to their unbelief. They teach us God's severity. From the Red Sea to Kadesh, we find encouragement and positive instruction. From Kadesh on, we mostly learn warnings by negative instruction. Even so, the grace of God is seen throughout the whole narrative. What helpful lessons can be drawn from numbers, both for the believers and unbelievers? Pictures of God's grace can be seen in the guiding cloud, the manna, the ribbon of blue on the Israelites' coat, Aaron's rod that budded, the ashes of the red heifer for cleansing, water from the smitten rock, the bronze serpent used in Jesus' preaching to Nicodemus, and the cities of refuge, among others. The New Testament writers found this a rich field for illustrating Bible truth, and we should too. God has the best illustrations. What are some of the great lessons in Numbers? First, with the desert in every direction, they discovered that when they had nothing but God, God was enough. Second, we learned the secret of progress in life. It was simple obedience. Every act of unbelief stopped Israel in their tracks. There they sat until ready to go forth in faith. Third, there is the principle that spiritual rest comes by spiritual conflict. We can't expect victories to be won without battles fought. The Book of Numbers includes fascinating character studies, irrepressible Miriam, enigmatic Balaam, long-suffering Moses, and the courageous daughters of Zelophehad, to name a few. And though there are dark clouds that sweep across the book's landscape, behind them all the sun of God's goodness continues to shine. We could do no better than to conclude with the high priestly benediction given directly from the heart of God to his people in chapter 6. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And that's our scripture snapshot of the book of Numbers.